Hello wonderful people, my name is Carol Vay and welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you to all of you who are out there listening and commenting and encouraging me. Sometimes I'll receive really negative comments and then after that I'll come to something that you might have written and you don't know how. It just lifts my spirits. Many are saying that I'm just doing this to make money and I actually am not making a single penny from this. I have not decided to monetize this channel yet and if I do so in the future, especially since they're playing commercials on my videos, then it might just be to reimburse myself for all of the equipment that I purchased. But at the rate I'm growing, it wouldn't be a lot of money. I even receive email after email to collaborate with manufacturers to show their products on my channel and I just completely ignore all of those because I want this channel to be devoted to the Lord only. So no, I'm not doing this for the money. And another commenter even said, who do you think you are? And I answered and said, I'm a nobody but I serve the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and, and he is coming back soon. So some of you who have been with me for a long time have heard my testimony already. So today might just be a review for you, but with so many new subscribers who I love and appreciate so much, I wanted to let you know the story behind why I'm here and why I'm talking about end times. And on one side, I I don't like to share this because I don't want it to be about me, but my testimony isn't about me. It really is about our Lord and Savior. I was raised going to church with my family, a Methodist church. And so I had this vague, distant belief in God that he was out there somewhere. And even as a younger person believed that thousands of years from now, he might be coming back, but my salvation and my walk with the Lord really began as an adult. After our first baby boy, Spencer, was born, he lived for two hours and he was in the neonatal ICU for about two hours before he passed away. It was really at this point that I decided God can't be real. He would never let this happen to such a good person. And of course, looking back, I wondered what made me think I was such a good person. Many friends and family were trying to comfort me and even Christian friends were trying so hard to lead me to the Lord. And a close friend of mine even invited me to a Bible study. And I really love this friend so much that I did want to please her. And I decided to attend the Bible study, but I literally told everybody there that I did not believe that Jesus was real and that if he was real, I would need to see a big miracle, like those Old Testament miracles, like the parting of the Red Sea. After all, why did these big miracles seem to happen so many thousands of years ago and yet nothing like this ever happened in these current days? One of the daily exercises in this Bible study was to read Jeremiah 17, 14 which says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. And I would read this scripture throughout the day, put it on post-it notes around our house so we could be reminded of it throughout the day. And I went through all the exercises as a non-believer, almost with the hopes that I could prove that the Bible was wrong. In one section of this Bible study, we went through the story of Joseph and his brothers from the book of, of Genesis. And we know that Joseph was rejected by the, his brothers. He was almost killed. He was sold into slavery. He was arrested for something he didn't do. And then he was exalted to second in command over all of Egypt. And he was the one responsible for saving his brothers when they were going through a famine in their country. And while going through this story, the study took me to Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to its purpose. And this was relating to the redemption 
in Joseph's life and him forgiving his brothers and how it all worked out for the good in their family. And at this point, I knew that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so suddenly I was thinking that with the story of Joseph and all these hard things led up to him saving so many people, combined with Romans 8, 28, which was written so many years later, and knowing that Jesus never changes, I suddenly believed it was all true. And I'm sure that that would have been enough. That would have been the miracle that I was looking for. But the Lord had heard me saying, I will not believe unless I can see a miracle. He allowed me to literally feel the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit filling up every inch of my body. I experienced this. To me, this was just like the parting of the Red Sea. It was so miraculous. I went from unbelief to belief in that moment. And this is what repentance really is. A couple days after this, I dumped out every bottle of alcohol that was in my house, which is kind of another miracle in itself since drinking had been a big part of my life. We had had two more children at this point who were four years old and five years old. And yet just a few weeks after I dumped out all that alcohol, I learned that I was pregnant with our third child, our fourth if you count Spencer, but our third child five years after my husband had had a vasectomy. I believe this is the Lord putting the icing on the cake with the miracles that I was demanding in order to believe. Because I had spent so much time studying the Bible and trying to prove that it was false, studying it as a non-believer, I thought I knew so much about the Word of God. And looking back, I could see that I had a haughty spirit. And in Proverbs, we read that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And I was so proud of myself that I had quit drinking before I learned that I was pregnant. And yet, even while I was pregnant, the enemy was trying to deceive me. Did God really heal your drinking problem? Or maybe you were just supposed to quit drinking while you were pregnant. Maybe you can go back to drinking after this baby is born. It's almost like the enemy was trying to twist God's words. And he did the same thing to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So after this birth of my third living child, my fourth baby, I did begin drinking again. And I drank at least a bottle of wine every day for 25 years. There may have been maybe five to 10 days in that 25 years where I didn't drink anything. I always hid my drinking from my church family and continued attending and serving at church on a regular basis. But this is something that God had so obviously healed me of right after I was saved. And I am not judging you if you enjoy a drink now and then, but if you struggle with alcohol, God can help. So as the years progressed, I was feeling more and more convicted by the Holy Spirit about this. And I began to study the Bible more diligently, seeking God more diligently, praying that He would give me the strength to stop drinking. I even returned to that first Bible study and started reading that scripture again. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. I was praying that the Lord would give me strength to stop, but also couldn't imagine living my life without alcohol, um, celebrating big events without drinking, going on vacations without drinking. And yet on January 26th of 2018, 
I was driving home from work like I did every day, wondering if I had enough wine at home for the evening. And I sat down and poured that glass of wine that night. And maybe I took a sip, but I clearly heard God say, this is it. Knowing me, you would think I would have at least finished that glass or finished the bottle, but I didn't have another sip. And the Lord healed me that night. It's been six and a half years now that I haven't had a single drop of alcohol. All glory to God. This was that same Rima word of God that I experienced the night that I was saved. It was such a tangible presence of God. And when I was thinking, Lord, what is the Romans 8.28 in this whole thing? Me drinking for decades so much. And then you healing me after 25 years. And I felt like it was because the Lord knew there were so many Christians out there struggling with long-term addictions or, or struggles in their lives. And he wants you to know that it's never too late for him to heal you of those things. It was about this time that the Lord put so much on my heart about Moses and what he had gone through. And I felt like God wanted me to share this message and specifically on YouTube, which I thought was weird. I never even watched anything on YouTube at that point. I was just living my life, going to work, raising my family. And so I was saying, Lord, why me? And it was so interesting that Moses also said, why me? Who am I? that I should deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And the Lord put a scripture on my heart with regard to the healing that he gave me. And Moses said to his people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, representing the world, whom you see today, you shall see again, no more forever. And this is how I knew God willing that my healing from alcohol was permanent. So as I was feeling the Lord putting YouTube on my heart, the only subjects I could think of were my testimony, my salvation testimony, and this drinking testimony. And it was literally two years before I would finally do something about this. It was when the COVID shutdown happened and suddenly I was working remotely which was saving me about 10 hours a week. And I started to seek the Lord just every moment I could find, praying, asking him, what was it that he was trying to show me? I felt like the Lord was prompting me to do this now, to get this whole thing started at this point. And yet I just couldn't imagine what I would talk about. I knew it was about God. I always wanted the Lord to know that he could depend on me if I felt him calling me to something. So between March and June of 2020, I stopped everything that was optional and just was seeking after God with everything I had. So at this point, I did get on YouTube and started looking even for videos that would teach me how to start a YouTube channel, how to film, how to edit, what type of camera to use, but I was also running across many Christian videos and watching those and learning more. And I was running across videos about people having dreams about the rapture. And my only experience with the rapture was when something really, really bad would happen in the news. I would think to myself, wow, maybe the rapture is about to happen. But again, I was thinking it was thousands of years in the future. And I had never done much study on end times and the rapture of the church. But I was blown away by the number of videos I was finding about people having dreams about the rapture. And many who were sharing these dreams were also sharing the gospel, which I thought was so cool. I even heard one prophet, self-proclaimed prophet, from the UK sharing or praying that she saw many rising up who would share the gospel and speak about God's coming judgment and that there would be a group of these people talking on YouTube. And I was even saying to myself, wow, 
I'm not that brave, but I wonder who those people are. So I had seen several of these videos regarding the rapture of the church, and yet it hadn't really changed my life at that point until one night at the end of June in 2020. In one of these videos, this person had dreamt about the rapture and then felt God leading him to share it on YouTube. And the way, the way he said that the Lord said, do it now, go now, do it now. That was the same feeling I had at the beginning of the shutdown when I was seeking God with all my heart. And suddenly I felt that same Rima word of God that I had experienced during my salvation and during that night I was healed from alcohol. It was so tangible. And suddenly I believed that the rapture could happen at any moment. My eyes were opened. I was awakened from sleep. In Matthew 25, we read, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. I remember even joking in March of 2020 when I was driving home as all these businesses were shutting down. Somebody asking me on the phone, wow, do you think this is it? Do you think the Lord's coming back soon? And I responded with, no, this can't be the end times because things aren't bad enough yet. Since then, I've learned that the rapture is an imminent, signless event, that everything that we know needs to happen before Jesus returns will need to happen before his second coming. But there's nothing that needs to happen before the rapture of the church. This was such a life-changing event and I couldn't learn about end times fast enough. I started uploading my videos right away and I have learned so much since I first started. I think my first video went up July 4th of 2020 and it's so interesting. I was always praying, Lord, I don't want this to be about me. I want it to be about you. And with this doctrine, speaking about end times and the rapture of the church, I think it really does show that this is God and not me because of all the opposition that comes towards those of us talking about this. And although we do see the pre-tribulation rapture of the church throughout scripture, it is such a divisive topic that most churches and most people that I know in my real life won't talk about. At a certain point, I realized I would be sharing the gospel in every video that we upload and that when we do speak about end times, it can include teachings on love, joy, peace, prayer, so many, you know, forgiveness. If anything, talking about end times has a way of enhancing our walk with the Lord and bringing us closer to the Lord as we see this day approaching. In fact, in 1 John, we read, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. We shall see Him as He is, and everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as he is pure. And although I have learned in these recent years that we cannot lose our salvation, we do go from glory to glory. And I'm sure some of you who do see this day approaching find yourself wanting to walk a life more pleasing to the Lord. But he paid it all when he died on the cross for our sins. There is nothing we can do to make our salvation more concrete than what he already did. He paid it all. We are looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What on earth could be more amazing than that day? When this first happened in June of 2020, I didn't even know if I'd get my first video up before we would be raptured. And now four years later, I'm still committed to this, still believing that it could happen at any time. In fact, there are a couple of reasons why we know it could be at any time now, but we do see the signs that Jesus spoke about 
to his disciples that he said would be happening in these end days. We see them converging worldwide. And the Lord said, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. So I began this video talking about how I did not believe in God after our first baby passed away. This was a full term neonatal infant death that really did devastate my husband and I and our family. And I was saying, God, if you are real, you're gonna have to show me a miracle. And throughout my walk, I have uh, compared this attitude to doubting Thomas. We know that he didn't believe that the disciples had seen the resurrected Lord after his death and burial. He said, I won't believe unless I can see the holes in his hands and put my finger in his side where the spear went in. But Jesus did appear to Thomas and Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Could it be that you are like Thomas as well? Do you believe today? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And this is so urgent because we do not know the day or the hour that he will be coming for us. But the Bible does say that we need to be ready and watching that the kingdom of God is at hand. The very last verses in the Bible Say, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. You can be ready for this day if you believe that Jesus is Lord. Jesus told his disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I and my Father are one. The Jewish people believed in the Father, but did they believe that Jesus was God? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus went eternity back with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And yet when it was time, he humbled himself being born of a virgin, just like the scripture said. He walked a sinless, perfect life. The only one ever to do so because the Bible says we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But he came for the purpose of dying and shedding his innocent blood for the remission of our sins so that we could be with him forever. That's how much he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died on the cross that day, was buried and rose again three days later according to the scriptures. And the Bible says that when we believe this, we are saved. And when we believe, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is our guarantee until the day of redemption. And I believe that that's speaking about the rapture of the church. The Holy Spirit is our promise, our guarantee. It's like the Lord putting an engagement ring on us, saying that he's going to come back for his bride. So I pray that you are believing this today. If you are turning to the Lord now, then praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm praying for you, as well as anybody who might be watching this video right now, that the Lord touches you right where you need him today. He loves you so much, no matter what you might be going through. And I pray he does give you that peace and comfort that really does surpass all understanding. And I wanna thank you for joining me. I really do love and appreciate all of you so much. And God willing, I will see you in the next video or I will see you in the air. So take care and God bless you.